Okay, just before filming this video, I spilled water down my face and my clothes and stuff. So if you see any water splatters on my clothing, just ignore them. I'm aware it happened. They'll dry. It's very hot here. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about my top 10 favorite books about animals. This is not going to be an extensive list. There's definitely books about animals that I've read that are good that are not on this list, but these are books either featuring animal narrators or animal characters that are somehow prominent to the plot that I really liked and that stuck with me pretty much my entire life. So I'm just going to jump right into it and most of these books I don't have. I actually only have three books in person from this list so I'll just try to include like the names and the authors in the captions below if you guys are interested in reading them. I'm going to do this list by age group the book is intended for starting with children's books and then middle grade, young adult, adult, blah. So it's not in any particular order of importance or favoritism or anything. These are just books that I really liked that are about animals. The first one on the list I do happen to have and it is a children's book. It is The Pokey Little Puppy by Jeanette Sebring Lowry. I've had this particular book since the dawn of time. This is basically a book about a little dog. I'm not sure what breed he is, but he's super cute and he's a naughty little boy and he does things that his mom says that he shouldn't while him and his siblings are out and about and he gets in trouble and there's cute illustrations. I remember when I was young reading this book and thinking the puppies were so cute and I also felt very bad for the pokey little puppy. Like I empathized with him a lot because he was always getting in trouble and bad little puppies don't get dessert but he was always stealing dessert and yeah it's just a cute book <laughs> it's a really cute book i bought this for my nephew even though you know obviously he can't read it yet but hopefully someone will read it to him Alrighty, i have a list in front of me if you see me looking down i also have my computer set up next to me in case i forgot like the major plots and stuff. I'm really bad at describing books so it's always nice to have a reference next to me. The next book that I want to talk about is actually a series. I believe these are children's books or middle grade and that is the Saddle Club series. And when I was a little kid I was very obsessed with horses. I was obsessed with horses pretty much throughout my childhood, middle school years, even in high school I really liked horses. I never owned any and I only went horseback riding a few times, but I always enjoyed them. They were my favorite animal for a very long time and the Saddle Club series is about a group of girls who have adventures at, I forget what the name of the riding school is, but they have these horse themed adventures surrounding this equine riding school that they all go to and it's a really cute series and it's huge. It's a very big series. I don't know how many books there are and there's been multiple iterations of it. There's also a TV series that was on and it's fun. It's a good series if you are someone or know someone who likes horses and friendship. <laughs> the next series is also about horses. I promise I won't have too many horse books but there are a few on this list and that is the Phantom Stallion series by Terry Farley and this series is about a 13 year old girl who moved away from her family's ranch in Nevada for a while after a bad horseback riding accident. And this is about her moving back to the ranch and kind of picking things up with her dad and her stepmom and her friend. And she hasn't seen these people in two years, I believe it says. Yeah. And the horse that she fell off of in the accident has run away, but she keeps seeing sightings of him. And it's almost this sort of like spiritual connection they have together. And again, this is another series about a young girl who has a connection with horses and she tries to help a lot of different horses throughout the entire series. There's a main series, The Phantom Stallion, and then there's a spin-off series that I believe is The Island Stallion something. But I believe it takes place in Hawaii and it's sort of like an island spin on horses and so on and so forth. And again, another good series for young people who like horses. The next book I want to talk about is Black Beauty by Anna Sewell. I don't know how you pronounce her last name, but this is a book that is told through the eyes of a horse named Black Beauty who is sold to a bunch of different people throughout his life. And by retelling this story, he talks about all the different owners that he's had and the cruelties that he's seen and the nice things that he's seen and the friends that he's made along the way, usually other horses, I believe. And so he's trying to find a happy home 
This is considered a young adult book, but I remember there were some instances where the content was a little bit more adult, specifically brief scenes of animal cruelty, and that just made me very sad <laughs> as a kid, but overall I think it's a nice book and it does have a pretty happy ending, so I would recommend this maybe to slightly older people. I mean young adult, whoever feels comfortable reading young adult books, if again you like horses. Now I believe we're going to get into the adult books and the next one I want to talk about is White Fang by Jack London. A lot of people I think prefer The Call of the Wild. I don't remember if I've read The Call of the Wild and that's why it's not on this list because if I did read it it didn't resonate with me that much. I remember White Fang vividly. I remember reading it at least twice when I was younger and so this is about a dog who's part dog, part wolf, and he's the lone survivor of his his pack, his um his litter, and he's taken in by I forget who he's taken in by initially, but he's taken in to the world of humans and he is eventually sold to be, I believe a, uh, what's the word? I believe he's sold into dog fighting. And so he, it's basically a story about him learning to survive despite the harshness of the world and the North and hoping to someday find a gentle master. I think it does end happily. I don't remember, but I remember not being very sad at the end of it, so I think things are okay for White Fang. But again, this is a really good book that is told from the perspective of a dog, and it's just a really interesting story. I don't know why I ended that sentence in such a weird way. <laughs> Clearly I was running out of words. The next book I want to talk about also within the adult category is The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Stein. And this book is actually what prompted me to film this video because they are doing a movie adaptation of The Art of Racing in the Rain. And this book is told from the perspective of Enzo, who is an old dog. And right here it says, On the eve of his death, Enzo takes stock of his life, recalling all that he and his family have been through. So you're seeing Enzo's life through his eyes and all of the the good and the bad things that him and his owner, Denny, had to go through. And this book made me cry. And that is why I'm not going to be watching the movie, probably, because the movie's going to make me cry. Anything that has to do with animals, especially like animals dying or being really close to humans and getting separated from them. If I talk too much and think too much about it, I'm going to start crying on camera, which I do not want to do. But this book really did make me sad. It was very heart-wrenching, a very touching story. And there are times when you're just kind of like, you're almost frustrated for Enzo because he is a very smart dog. They consider him, a, they call him a philosopher with a nearly human soul. And he thinks that he's going to be reincarnated as a human when he dies. <laughs> Oh my god, the concept is gonna make me cry. I can't talk about this too long. But this was a really good book. It's really good and there's a lot more stuff that goes into it than just what I'm talking about. But if you like animals and you want a nice story and if you think you might want to watch the movie, definitely read the book first because it's good. It's very good. It's a very good boy. Okay. The next one I want to talk about is a bit more of a serious book, and that is Animal Farm by George Orwell. I read this book in school, and this is one of those few... <laughs> I mean, there were plenty of books that I was assigned in English class in high school and middle school that I did like, but this is one that really stuck with me. And of course there are political implications behind this book, but it is funny to see, I think it's communism specifically, talked about through the eyes of animals. And so the book itself is about a bunch of overworked, mistreated farm animals who take over their the human's farm, the humans that they're uh, owned by. I don't know why I couldn't think of that word. When they take over, they realize that they still should establish leadership of some sort so that the farm chores and living requirements, lifestyle requirements still get accomplished. That's where you see, you know, the things like slogans and people, people, animals, uh, deciding that certain other animals are not as good as these and that's. These and that's. Wow, okay, we're really on the ball today. Stalinist Russia? Is that what it's talking about? Communism? Stalinism? I'm not good with politics. But yeah, it's fun because it's a satire that has a huge political commentary. And you can see how they use these fictional anthropomorph... Anthropomorph... How do you say this word? Anthropomorph... 
Animals that are made to behave like humans are only doing exactly what the humans did. So rather than taking over the farm and making it for the better, they end up making it exactly the way it was when the humans were in charge. So it's a good book to read if you like stuff that is reflective of real life government and situations, but takes a sort of funny, fictional, approachable take on it. I'm struggling with my words today. All right, so the last three books that I have are all nonfiction books. So the first one is My Life in Dog Years by Gary Paulson. And Gary Paulson is a, I believe he wrote pretty much young adult and children's books. I remember reading his other, I think Hatchet is one of his books, right? Yes. I read Hatchet in elementary school, fourth grade, fifth grade, something around there. And so I happened to recognize his name when I saw this book at like a yard sale or book sale or someplace like that. And this is his nonfiction recollection of all the dogs that had a strong impact on his life. This has been listed on the children's genre on Goodreads, but I don't think that it's anything that children exclusively would enjoy. I think anyone who has owned dogs or pets and they've had a strong impact on your life would like these because it's it's just him telling the story of all of these amazing dogs that he loved and cared for throughout his entire life and that had an impact on him and he wanted to immortalize them. And one of the cool things that I can remember, I don't have the book in front of me, but I think each chapter tells the story of a different dog and there was a little like pencil drawing or pen drawing of what the dog looked like, even the ones from his childhood when he probably didn't have photographs of these dogs. So I thought that was a really cool touch and the dog owner slash animal lover in me really liked this book as a kid. These two books I actually have here. What do you know? See, let's just talk about this one first because it's on top of the pile. Uh, that it would be Caesar's Way by Caesar Milan. And it is, let's see, it says, The Natural Everyday Guide to Understanding and Correcting Common Dog Problems. I like this book because I really like Caesar Milan's dog training style or his approach to dog behavior. And this is kind of a mix of ways that you can approach dog behavior issues. And it's also a bit of a biography, autobiography about his life. So it was very interesting to see him talk about his life and his experiences while also giving some tips on dog ownership. And it's not really heavy on the dog training aspect of things, but it was a good mix where he used personal experience to teach. Yes, let's say that. So I thought it was a very interesting book and good philosophies. So if you own a dog and would just like to learn more about dog psychology and ways that you can better help your dog, then I would definitely recommend this book. He also has a YouTube channel fairly recently, so you can also find that on the YouTubes where you are currently, duh. He shares some interesting stuff there as well. The last book I want to talk about is Animal Speak by Ted Andrews. I've had this book, again, since the dawn of time. It's, I was gonna say it's damaged, it's not, but it's definitely been used and you can tell. How do I want to describe this? So it's listed on the back here as shamanism slash nature slash magic. I guess I got this from Borders, but I originally saw it in this, uh, this catalog we used to get that had a lot of magical, witchy sort of stuff in it. Okay, Dropbox, I'm talking, don't interrupt. So this is definitely a spiritual, does it say here? The spiritual and magical powers of creatures great and small. So it takes a shamanistic approach to nature and animals and what they have to teach us. This is really hard for me to describe. It touches upon Native American medicine and like what shamans would do to help people heal. And I don't, I feel like I'm trying to describe this in a way that doesn't sound dumb or like I don't know what I'm talking about. I personally don't practice shamanism and or anything like that anymore, but this book was really helpful in the sense that it did give me a sense of spirituality. I've never been a religious person, my family was never religious, and I've never really felt like I could connect in a spiritual way to the world until I read this book. And it was really cool because it helps you identify your spirit animals. And I mean like that in the actual way that people say spirit animal, not the, I don't know, social media way that people say like, ah, so-and-so is my spirit animal. No, it means like what your actual animal totems are and what you can learn from them. 
and it has some stuff on meditation and how to read omens and messages in nature and yeah it's just hard for me to describe without just reading the back or without sounding like an idiot who doesn't know what they're talking about, which is probably what I sound like right now. It really helped me <laughs> learn how to be spiritual and to connect with nature because I've always felt very strongly connected to nature and animals. And so it really helped me tune that, or I guess fine tune that in a way that helped me, that helped me feel relaxed and in tune with myself. This is a spiritual type book. It's very interesting and at the very least, even if you don't really connect with the spiritual side of things, it does talk a lot about interesting stuff about nature and animals. So if that kind of stuff appeals to you, then I recommend this book. <laughs> I felt like I was talking myself into a hole. I always feel weird when I don't know how to describe what a book is about, especially a nonfiction self-help kind of book. So I hope that made some sense to you guys. So that is my top 10 books about animals. I know there are definitely some books not on this list that I really liked growing up, but I didn't want to have a really long extensive list. And these were ones that really came to mind when I first thought about filming this video. So if you read any of these books, tell me which one was your favorite. And if there are any books about animals that you like that weren't on this list, then comment them below with your recommendations because I would definitely read more books about animals, whether that's a nonfiction book, that's somehow related to animals or a fiction book that has animal protagonists. I love that stuff. It's just really hard for me to read some of these books sometimes because they can be really sad. And <laughs> I'm that kind of person where if the dog dies in a movie, then I am just like crying. I cry very easily when it comes to animals and humans connecting and those relationships. So let me know in your recommendations if you think the book is a sad one so then I can decide whether or not I want to read it because I know there are some really good books out there that I know are going to be sad so I have never bothered to read them because I just don't want to expose myself to that kind of sadness all the time. That's all I have for you guys today. If you'd like to keep up with me on my writing endeavors then I will leave all of my social media links below in the description as well as a link to my debut self-published novel Blood of Fire which features animals for a reason. And that reason is because I'm an animal lover. So it just came natural. I think every book, almost every book that I've written has either been mostly about animals in some way or just featured at least one really prominent animal character or secondary character or pet or something. I don't think I've written very many books that didn't have animals in them. Anyway, before I run out of time on my camera and blather on anymore, I'm gonna say see ya. <laughs>